In the ever-evolving landscape of world football, there emerge certain talents who captivate fans, pundits, and scouts alike with their raw skill, creativity, and potential to shape the game's future. One such luminary is Joao Felix, a Portuguese prodigy whose meteoric rise through the ranks has left an inedible mark. With a dazzling blend of flair, vision, and technical brilliance, Joao Felix has firmly established himself as one of the most exciting young talents of this generation. But his star-studded beginning at Benfica has been nothing but downhill, moving on to Atletico Madrid and then Chelsea, before making the shocking trade deadline move to his dream club, FC Barcelona. In this video, I'm going to be going over the decline of Joao Felix's production and how this amazing move to Barcelona can restore his career and make Felix go back to his young Benfica days. Looking back at his Benfica days, Joao Felix was labeled as the next Cristiano Ronaldo. During his final season at Benfica 2018-2019, Joao Felix showcased his immense potential by scoring 18 goals and providing 8 assists in 33 appearances. Playing over 2,200 minutes, he had an expected goals of 12 and 6.6 .6 assists. But most importantly, his progression with the ball was incredible during his time there. The progression carries are the carries that move the ball towards the opponent's goal line at least 10 yards from its further point in the last 6 passes, or any carry into the penalty area, where Felix had 71 in that season alone, his highest from all the seasons he has played up until today. The progressive passes were also an insane amount with 112, which is almost double of his second best in his career, which we will talk about later on. Finally, the progressive passes received are the passes where a player received on the final third and Joao Felix had it to 126, averaging 8.86 per 90, which, for context, that season the highest was Raheem Sterling with 14.2. He was a threat up front because he was always in the final 60% of the pitch, and this stat resembles how his player awareness of space is and how focal he was in the attack. His stellar performances earned him a 126 million transfer to Atletico Madrid, where expectations ran high. His time at Atletico Madrid wasn't as expected though, because as we all know, Atletico are a very defensive team, limiting his true potential. The following 2019-2020 season, his production decreased dramatically, playing almost 200 more minutes as last season with only 9 goals and 3 assists. His progressive passes received a lower to 144, averaging 5.2, and every stat by itself lowered, as his production and impact on the team wasn't as much as Benfica. Through his 5 seasons at Atletico Madrid, he had a total of just 469 progressive passes received, and averaged only 5.4. But fast forward to this past season, where he made a low move to Chelsea, his numbers looked different. The first half of the 2022-2023 season, he played in Atletico Madrid, playing 20 games with 5 goals and 3 assists, and a PBR of 58. But when he moved to Chelsea, where he also played 20 games, he had almost double with 101 but only 4 goals with 0 assists. Now, why is this statistic important? Once Joao Felix played in a team dedicated to attacking football, his production and presence on the field was seen. He had more of the ball and was more confident in attacking. Chelsea, playing in the Premier League, considered one of the most difficult leagues in the world but also one of the most attacking leagues, helped Joao Felix regain back his confidence. And now, he has the chance to redeem his career by transferring to FC Barcelona one of the most attacking teams in Europe and a team that desperately needs more attack because of Osmane Dembele's departure. Last season, FC Barcelona's best players in the progression passes received in the final third were Rafinha, Lewandowski, Balde and Dembele. Three attackers and one speedster left back are the people with most runs forward and the most trusted to attack. Although it's a small sample, this season's biggest attackers surround the 16-year-old Lamin Yamal, which of course can't be reliable at such a young age. Upon Joao Felix's arrival and Dembele's departure, we can see Felix provide a great attacking addition to the star-studded lineup and can help in many different ways. Joao can play in Dembele's place in a 4-3-3 as a left winger who stays up front and can play as a second striker or even a 4-4-2 partnering up with Lewandowski. Xavi can really get creative with Joao as he can play as a cam false 9 as well, providing creativity on the creating goals aspect or finishing aspect. Draw ceiling in FC Barcelona, in my humble opinion, is as high as it can get. He can finally, after many years, play consistently in an attacking team who really needs his speed, flair, and creativity to compete in Europe. He can finally prove his price tag plays back in 2019 and can be crucial to this year's European campaign that Barcelona has been desperately craving for. I think he can fill the gap the team needs, and he has a chip on his shoulder since Atletico Madrid started benching him and wanted him to leave. 
Joao Felix dipping goals and assists since leaving Benfica can be attributed to several factors, including tactical differences, injuries, and the adaptation period at Atletico Madrid. However, a potential transfer to FC Barcelona offers hope for his career revival. The Catalan club's tactical style, support system, and rich history of developing attacking talents could provide the ideal environment for Joao Felix to rediscover his form and once again dazzle the footballing world with his talents.